Hello everyone, I'm Ashwin Kamath, Senior Product Manager at Snowflake, and I focus on telemetry and observability. In today's session, we will talk about logging and tracing for your Snowflake applications. We will look at what event tables are, who it is for, and what its key benefits are. Then we'll look at how it works and what you need to do to use it in your code. And finally, we'll conclude with a demo. What are the key benefits of event table? So, well, it is for developers. And for developers, you can easily instrument user code to capture logs and traces from Snowpark, Snowpark ML, and Snowflake native applications. It is supported for all languages such as Java, Scala, JavaScript, Python, and Snowflake scripting. You can query all your logs and traces in one central location, the event table. With improved developer experience and observability, you can enable uh, better user experience for your applications. Let's get into some details. With event tables, developers can instrument logs and traces from their UDFs, UDTFs, stored procedures, native apps, connectors, Snowpark containers, and they are seamlessly routed to a customer-owned event table. Developers can query event tables to troubleshoot their applications or gain insights into the performance and behavior of their code. And in conjunction with other telemetry features such as Snowflake alerts and email notifications, customers can be notified of new events and errors in their applications. Let's see how this works. Snowflake's telemetry APIs enable you to instrument your code to capture logs and traces. These are then automatically ingested into Snowflake via the telemetry pipeline. You do not have to do anything for ingestion. That's all handled automatically. Now, all the telemetry data lands in an event table. This is a managed table that has predefined set of columns. And there is only one active event table per account. And that telemetry data is stored in open telemetry schema. Now, here is an example of creating an event table. First, we create the database, then a schema, and finally, the event table called events. We then set the newly created events table to the, as the active event table for this account. You can then grant log level and trace level privileges to an admin role. And in this case, we have used a central telemetry admin role as an example. Afterwards, you can start to configure the log and trace levels at different scope. In this example, we set log level parameter to DB1 at the database level to error, and then for that function F1 to warning. As a note, make sure that you set the right log levels for your UDF or your UDTFs as there could be a lot of logs. Let's look at a Python UDF. Now, in this case, we have imported a telemetry module to gain access to the necessary telemetry APIs for generating all those logs and traces. When handling an exception, we log a message in Python standard logging modules. Now, if you were using Java, you can use the SLF4J for logging. And here is a JavaScript stored procedure. Now, this is a, a procedure called positive underscore sentiment that accepts a string parameter and returns a string representing the sentiment of the input. It's a very happy procedure as since it's always returns positive. Now, the add event method in here is invoked to create an event named call with some attributes that describe the input text length. The key is text length and the value is simply the length property of the text parameter. That's all that is required to create an event in the stored procedure. Now, this would generate an event per row processed by this stored procedure uh, if events were enabled, and which could be a lot of events, right? So exercise with caution uh, as you use the telemetry APIs to log events. You can control the trace level by altering the parameter at various scopes. In this example, the trace level for the procedure is set to always, which means events are always emitted. Now, you could also set it as on event um, so that you can control and log only the events that you choose to uh, capture. So please refer to our docs for additional information about trace and log levels. Now that you have seen the whole telemetry pipeline in action, let's see how this works for a Snowflake native application. When the application is running, it is running in the consumer's account and it's generating the telemetry that is all logged into the customer's event table. For a provider to see these telemetry signals, the consumer must explicitly enable event sharing. Now, this ensures the consumers have the ability to audit the telemetry data before it's shared with the provider. And once the provider enables event sharing, the new telemetry will be ingested into both the consumer and the provider event tables. You have various ways to consume these events, right? Once it gets into the event table. 
And as we go through the demo, we will touch upon a few of those things. Right? You can use the Snowside dashboards. You can use your own Streamlit app uh, to review um, all the events alongside rest of your data in Snowflake. Uh, you can use Snowflake alerts, or you can also use uh, third-party tools to visualize those events. Now let's go and take a look at a demo application. So this demo is about a company's ski lift sales ticket ingestion. Imagine that raw ski lift ticket sales data is being ingested into Snowflake way, uh, from various sales terminals or uh, from by sales agents using third-party tools and spreadsheets. It could have incomplete fields or bad formatting. And this needs to be validated and cleaned before the finance team can report and account for all the sales. The developer has a task that runs every hour, which primarily executes a stored procedure um, and which run in, which in turn runs a UDTF to parse that incoming raw data, inspects it, and ingests only the clean records and saves the bad data for reevaluation. Now, using the event table, they can capture and log all the bad records. And they can add tracing to also measure the quality of the data being ingested. And lastly, they can uh, set alerts and notifications to monitor um, the errors or uh, events being captured in the event table. Now let's switch over and take a look at the code. So here we are in my uh, SQL worksheets, right? And let's go through all the code necessary for the ski ticket sales data ingestion demo. So here I'm using uh, the database uh, I've created, alerts and events guide. Um, and I, I have already created the event table, but here is the command I used, create or replace event table. And I have set it, a very important step, I've set it as my active event table for that account. Remember, there's only one active event table in an account. You could have multiple event tables, but there's only one active at any given time. And all the uh, logs and traces from all your applications go to that single active event table. Now, in this case, I have set um, the uh, log level as info because I want to capture some info level logs as well and uh, warning. But you may want to set it as warning and above only if you expect a lot of logs. Um, and for trace, uh, I could have used trace level equals always, on event or off. And in this case, I want to capture only my trace events that uh, my code is logging. So I'm going to capture it as trace level trace level equals on event. And of course, this is the 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 table that we already have. The table that um, you know captures all the incoming raw data, which could be good and bad. Uh, so that's the ingested data table, which is just which just has one uh, field which captures the entire incoming raw data. And the final table the, where we want to capture the clean records uh, is the lift tickets table, right, which has predefined um, uh, fields. Um, so let's go ahead and ingest some records. Uh, here are some raw records into the uh, ingested data table. Some of them could be valid records, some of them could be bad, and let's see how uh, telemetry and event table help us um, capture those. So, yep, we inserted 14 rows. So now, here is the, the stored procedure, transform tickets, which is part of the task um, uh, that runs every hour, uh, that uh, validates the incoming data that we just inserted, and then parses it using the UDTF try parse ticket. And if there are good records, it ingests them into the lift ticket tables. If there are bad records, it identifies the issue and logs them into the event table. So this is the stored procedure. Um, and let's give it a run for the inserted records as we go through the uh, UDTF. So I've invoked it manually, but you can imagine the stored procedure runs as a part of the task every hour. Now let's look at the UDTF, right, which is actually parsing uh, the raw data that we ingested into the um, ingest ingestion table. So here I have you. This is a Python UDTF. I have used um, the import telemetry uh, module, and I'm going to use three variables. Remember, I, I mentioned that I want to check the quality of the incoming data. So I'm going to look at uh, which, uh, what percentage of the records are good uh, in that incoming data, so that I can have a conversation with all the external suppliers of all the uh, you know sales tickets. So here it is set as zero. 
Uh, bad data, I've created another variable to count that. That is also set to zero. And bad date formatting errors are also set to zero. And I'm checking first if the data or the incoming uh, uh, JSON element is complete and is it uh, is it a good record. If it is not, I am logging it. I'm using logging.error to capture it as an error in the event table. And I would increment my uh, bad data error variable as well. And next, I'm going to look at it if the date format is set correctly. If it is not, then I'm logging an error for that as well, uh, stating that it's a bad date issue, right? And of course, incrementing the counter for that. And if everything is fine, then yeah, it goes ahead and inserts that particular row in the, uh, the, the final lift ticket table. And of course, I increment the counter for that as well. And lastly, I then add all of these the, the final value within that single run of that uh, UDTF, single invocation of the UDTF into the event table as an event with key value pairs, records ingested, the good records, the bad uh, data records, and the bad date records. Finally, I just wanted to log an info level that, hey, this particular uh, UDTF invocation happened and it ingested so many good records. So here you can see that you know um, the the UDTF is capturing all of those into the event table, and every time the task runs, um, uh, it calls the stored procedure. It invokes the UDTF for a certain set of rows, and it's uh, it's capturing logs and traces. Now let's go look at what's going on because we just inserted 14 rows. So here I have a, uh, a snow site dashboard um, that helps me visualize. Um, the quality of the data as well as the errors and warnings. So let's make sure it's updated. There you go. So we ingested 14 records. If you remember, here we have those 14 records out of which 10 were good records, three are bad data records, and one has a bad data format, and that accounts to, to totally 14 uh, records, right? And uh, you can see that there are four errors and one info. Now let's go look at uh, what those are. I'm just going to click on the table here. Here on the right side, you can see that good records inserted were 10. These are those um, bad uh, uh, records, which is like, you know, three of them have uh, incomplete data. So we capture them as logs. And we also have a bad date record. One of them is a, has a bad date formatting. So there you go. So, so once my data gets into event table, I can use a snow site dashboard to quickly uh, review the incoming uh, data and its quality, right? So here I have captured using a simple query, uh, uh, you know, um, at what percentage of all incoming data is actually uh, good. So we have 54.74% of good records. Um, similarly, uh, you could also go uh, and build your own Streamlit app. And here is a app, one of my peers built to help visualize the logs from event tables. Um, it looks at all the various types of logs in Streamlit. You have a quick graph to view them. And I could even do a quick search here and say bad JSON. And it searches for those records. And I can view those here in the table, bad JSON records. So the, the, these are a few ways to consume uh, your uh, events from event table. I want to go back and also talk a little bit about alerts. So um, yes, you can visualize them in dashboards and other tools, but you can also create alerts to be notified on uh, errors or warnings, right? So here as a first step for alerts, we create an, uh, an object of a notification type, right? This uh, specifies what emails or what uh, um, uh, who to who to notify? This this actually helps uh, you set up a notification recipient for your uh, alerts. And then I create the alert, which runs every ten minutes and looks if looks into the event table whether there are any errors in the records, and then sends the email uh, to the particular um, uh, notification integration we just created above. Right. Uh, definitely remember once you create the alert, definitely remember to um, alter it and resume it. Uh, and then you can always go look at the state of the alerts by running show alerts. We looked at various ways to consume the events from your event table. Your logs and traces can be consumed via snow site dashboards. 
You can build your own streamlit applications to consume them um, or use your own favorite third party tool uh, to connect and integrate with Snowflake. Um, and lastly, you can use uh, the Snowflake alerts and notifications to stay on top of the errors or warnings coming from the applications. So let's hear what customers tell us. So Nick here is migrating his Spark and Hadoop applications to Snowpark. And prior to event tables, it was pretty hard debugging thousands of lines of Java code. But now with event tables, they have a common consistent way to consume all the logs and traces and debug faster and improve their productivity. And here we have Mapbox, who's building geospatial applications in the Snowflake marketplace. And we also have Omnata with native applications in the Snowflake marketplace. Both are Snowflake native applications uh, that benefit from event sharing and use those valuable events and traces from these applications to improve the user experience for their end users. So now you have seen how an event table works and how to use it to troubleshoot your applications. Scan the QR code to try out the demo app for yourself. Thank you.